We've now concluded part two of the lab where we've changed the blink rate of the LEDs by modifying the delay value. We've compiled and uploaded it to the Arduino. We see that the light blinks faster. Our next step is to now work with the breadboard. So if we take a second and look at this diagram here, what we have shown is the connections from the Arduino Uno. In this case, in the lab, we're connecting to pins six, seven, and five to three separate LEDs. And each LED has a current limiting resistor in series with the LED. In order for these LEDs to turn on and off, we need three separate signal lines from the Arduino. So that's a signal line connected from pin five, six, and seven. The signal line is simply just a piece of wire that connects the LED to the Arduino. In order for the LED to turn on, there must be current flow. Well, the current in this case is flowing from the positive power provided by the Arduino to the positive power rail. The LEDs are then connected to the positive power rail through each resistor individually, and then the LEDs are turned on when a ground is supplied by the UNO or a LOW. The goal in this lab is to make each one of these LEDs turn on and off one at a time at a rate of 250 milliseconds. So let's now take a look at the actual breadboard physically what it looks like. So on my breadboard I have my three LEDs, in this case a green, a yellow, and a red, and I have my three resistors, which are each connected in series with each LED. Now, the breadboards work by having the rows, so if you can see here, each row is electrically connected to one another. The gap in the middle here is so that we can isolate one set of rows from the other set of rows. The resistors are spanning this gap, and I have my three LEDs plugged into the ground rail on the board. Now, this is backwards to what you saw in the PDF document in the video. The reason I did this is because this is a positive logic convention. This means that when I assert a high or when I write a high to my Arduino pin, the light will come on. In the lab setup example, it's a negative logic convention. That means when I write a low or a zero or assert a ground, these are all terms to say the same thing, the light comes on. Both work and both will function the same, but this provides a better view of what's actually going on in the circuit. Now, when it comes to actually connecting the LEDs, we need to know how to connect them because there's two terminals on each LED, and an LED is what we call a unidirectional device. It only allows current to flow in one direction. So the way we understand how current flows in an LED is we can look at this symbol here for a diode. So at the top of my sheet here, I have the symbol for a diode, which is an arrow with a bar. So the more positive side of the diode is the side with the arrow. The side with the bar is the more negative side. That means current always flows from the more positive side to the more negative side. The way to remember this is the arrow always points in the direction of current flow. Now, when we're talking about an LED, if we look at the symbol down below here at the bottom of the sheet, the LED, if viewed from the top, is round with one flat side. The flat side of the LED, or the light emitting diode, is the bar. So again, the flat side of the LED is the same as the bar on the diode. So when you look at your LED, you have two pins on the LED. The pin that is closest to the flat side, so if I inspect this LED here, this leg here, which is also shorter, so typically the more negative lead is the shorter one, is on the flat side. So the flat side of this diode has the shorter lead, so this is going to be my lead that's more negative. My longer lead, which is not closest to the flat side, will be more positive. If I was connecting this to a battery, the longer lead would go to the positive terminal, 
and the shorter lead next to the flat side would go to the negative terminal. Now, in order to hook up my Arduino to my breadboard to turn these lights on and off, I'm going to need four wires. I'm going to need three wires that connect my Arduino's pins, so in this case, pins five, six, and seven to each LED. I'm also going to need a pin that connects the ground connection. So those are my three wires connecting my three LEDs now to pins five, six, and seven. And now I need to add a ground wire so that current can flow. I must have a closed loop in order for current to flow. So there we go. I've now connected the ground wire from my Arduino. And if I look at my Arduino here, the pins are all labeled, so I can see here in the middle it's ground. And then if I look at the other side of the Arduino, I can also see the numbering on the Arduino where it has pin numbers 5, 6, and 7. So now my Arduino is fully connected and ready to be programmed to turn each LED on one at a time. So you'll need to take the code that's existing in the example for Blink and modify it so that pins 5, 6, and 7 are made in output and that they turn on and off in a sequence. Now that we've completed part three of the lab and we've successfully made the three LEDs blink at a 250 millisecond rate on pins seven, six, and five, we need to actually submit our lab with the code. So you need to submit part three of the lab to Dropbox on D2L. Before you submit it, your code needs to be commented. So you need to add in comments to the code that describe why you're doing the things you're doing. So if we take a look quickly at the code that's provided, so if we look here, we see a number of comments that are provided in the Arduino software. Now, if you notice, compared to my other videos, there's no line numbers here, as well as you're not able to collapse the functions or the comments. If you'd like to have line numbers and code folding, you need to go to File, Preferences, and then Enable line numbers and code folding, which makes your code much more readable. And now you see you have the ability to, to collapse functions, as well as you have line numbers for each item. Now, back to the comments. If we take a look at this comment here in line 19, it says that the following line of code, so pin this line of code here, where it says pin mode 13 output. So the comment says it initializes digital pin 13 as an output. This is what we call a what comment. It's telling you what it's doing. While initially this seems useful, as you become proficient at reading C code, a what comment isn't that useful because I know that when I use the function pin mode, I'm setting the mode of a pin. In this case, I'm setting the mode of the pin as an output and which pin in particular, pin 13. So this comment here doesn't give me any new information. What would be more important or what would be a better comment would be a why comment. Why am I setting pin 13 as an output? Well, I'm setting pin 13 as an output because I want to control an LED. I have an LED connected to pin 13 and I want to control, I want to turn it on and off. I can only turn it on and off if it's made an output. That's a much better comment than what the code's doing. Now, as far as submitting the code, once you're done, save your sketch with your comments added into it for the additional pins for pins five, six, and seven and then go to D2L. On D2L, go to My Tools and go down to Dropbox. And in Dropbox, you'll find that there's a Lab 1 area here where you can submit your code to Lab 1. As you can see, there's a due date for Lab 1 of September 15th. In general, all labs are due one week after you do the lab. So if you do a lab today on the 7th of September, it's due seven days from now on the 14th before you start your next lab period. This is true for all labs at Camosun. You typically have one week unless otherwise instructed to submit your labs and complete them. 